Hello everyone and welcome back to my dark room. Uh, today we're going to be going over something kind of interesting. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, different film formats. So what I'm going to do is go over not a comprehensive list of every film format ever, but just the formats that I have and the formats that I've shot and developed with. So I think the best place to start is working our way up from smallest to largest. So the first thing we're going to go over is 110 film. Uh, this here is a 110 camera. This is the Kodak Tele Instamatic 608. Um, pretty straightforward as far as a camera. Really just what you'd call a point and shoot. You have your shutter and then you have your winder and then the film comes in on the back here. And when we talk about 110, here is a 110 film cartridge. So as you can see this one is a 12 exposure and you basically just have a reel for the film and then a reel for the take up as you shoot through your frames. Um, and this was something that Kodak did a lot of. These were cartridge films. So the whole idea was there was no winding or rewinding. You simply put in a cartridge, shot it, and then when you were done, you were done and you took the cartridge out and then you take and develop it. So that's our 110. Um, pretty small film area as you can see by the open area on this cartridge. So definitely on the smaller end of film. Uh, this actually stuck around until right around when digital became a thing. And then at that point, people kind of went away from this because, well, digital killed it. So that's 110. All right, so the next camera moving on from the 110 is the Kodak APS film camera. So APS was a film size that Kodak created. Um, and it was slightly smaller than 35. But, once again, they were on the idea of using the cartridge. So, much like the 110, APS uses uh, a cartridge like this. So it's completely sealed, you'd put it into the camera and it would auto-load and uh, do all that work for you. So, this was Kodak's answer to kind of the digital resurgence going, okay, people want simplicity over 35 millimeter. we'll give that to them. Um, and there is probably more, well, probably more uh, complicated or more uh, professional level APS cameras. This is one I happen to have lying around. Um, you just load the film in the bottom, and then it was very much point and shoot. Um, I don't know if anybody ever remembers any of these or if you've ever shot with APS, but there's actually three settings on here. There was normal, there was cropped and then there's panoramic and depending on what you chose it would still expose the whole piece of film but there was actually a coded piece on the film that would tell the developer or the uh, lab what you shot and then it would be printed accordingly which is kind of strange because it really didn't affect how the film was exposed it was simply just coded that way for the people developing it so APS alright moving on next from APS, we go to uh, once again another Kodak camera. This is the Kodak Instamatic 104, and this shot 126 film. So 126 was also another step below 35 millimeter, and then once again on the same level of it being a cartridge. So very similar to the 110, where you have a window on the back where the film is, and then you have your two reels. You have your take up and then your uh, reel where the film goes as it's exposed. So same concept, you'd put this into your camera and then when it was done you'd simply take it out. There's no rewinding, there's no chance of exposing the film because it would always stay in either side of the roll here. Um, Instamatic cameras are really quite similar to what the 110 cameras were. Uh, really 110 and 126 are pretty similar in the sense that they're cartridge and they're point and shoot cameras. So you just have a winder and then your shutter button. Uh, and actually in terms of size, this was about the same size as 35 millimeter. In fact, because this is obsolete, to shoot with this camera we actually take 35 and we roll it onto this roll and reuse it. You can see you actually just tape the edges here to keep this together. So 126 is actually the same size as 35 millimeter, just you have a cartridge versus your roll. So there you go, that's 126 film, uh, another Kodak cartridge film that was short-lived and no longer in production.
So if you're seeing a trend here, that's why. All right. So next we're moving on to something that everybody knows about, and that is 35 millimeter. So this is just a Canon 35 millimeter SLR with a zoom lens on it. Um, hopefully everybody watching this is familiar with what 35 millimeter film is and kind of how it works. So 35 millimeter was definitely probably one of the more popular film sizes. And even today, a lot of people that are shooting film are shooting this 35 millimeter style. Um, the benefits of 35 millimeter, when you look at the cartridge, you have a nice film cartridge. It's pretty easy to load, pretty portable. Um, and a lot of companies besides just Kodak uh, use this. There's Fuji, Ilford, <laughs> uh, Arista, Foma, all the different styles. So I think 35 has really done well because so many other companies adopted it and ran with it. Um, and that's pretty much the reason why it's the most recognized film format. When someone talks about shooting film, they're usually talking about 35 millimeter film. Um, and because it's popular, you'll see the biggest range of uh, different styles of camera. Like I said, this is just your regular SLR, film SLR style. But you could also get 35, mm, eh, 35 millimeter cameras that shot uh, rangefinder, uh, point and shoots, uh, SLRs, twin reflex. Lots of fun stuff that can be done with these. Or I guess lots of really good options. So. There you go, that's 35 millimeter, what we would consider the most common size. So then from there, we're just going to keep on moving on up. Alright, so next after 35, we jump back to Kodak, and what we have with Kodak is the 127 film format. Now this was not a cartridge format, this was actually a rolled format. Um, and this was back in a time when they were really focusing, once again, on the point and shoot idea. Uh, you know, point and shoot. You have your winder, and you have your shutter button, and there was not much else to it. So, 127 was built around what we would consider a simple kind of film style. So, that's 127, and like I said, not cartridge, but actually, 127 was on a roll, similar to what 10, one uh, what 110 film was rolled onto. So really kind of like a precursor or around the same time that 120 film was being shot with uh, 127 came out and it was just a slightly smaller more portable more consumer friendly format um it didn't hang around that long obviously 121 out uh, similar to how 35 millimeter went out over all these other cartridge sizes or smaller film sizes so once again Kodak coming in with 127 so after 127 is the 620 style film. So here we have um, a Kodak 620 film camera. Um, and this one, nice, easy kind of point and shoot again. Uh, I've actually done a video on this one before. So it has an overhead viewfinder and then fires through this lower lens. Um, so it's a point and shoot, so there's no focusing system. It's simply just a fixed focus. Um, but kind of a really nice package so which uh, that's kind of what 620 focused on again much like all of our other Kodak formats they were kind of thought of as point and shoot or consumer friendly style products uh, 127 or not 127 sorry 620 uh, was shot on a spool close to 120 um, and I've talked about this in that same video where we shot with this Kodak camera is the 120 spools are just slightly bit larger than our 620 spools here that you can see. Um, these are also made out of metal, just a little thinner. Um, we actually talked about shooting with this 620 camera and re-rolling our 120 film onto a 620 spool to be able to shoot in it. So that's a lot of fun. All right, so after 620, we move on to 120 film. Um, 120 film is pretty similar to 35 in the sense that it was uh, really wide used throughout the community of people shooting photography. Uh, 120 is a film that's still available today, like 35 millimeter film. Um, and 120 is just a step above 620. They're close enough that you can actually roll 120 film onto a 620 spool and get that to work. In fact, that's how, like I said, we shoot with this camera. Um, 
120 comes in a lot of different varieties of cameras. This is an example of a rangefinder, but there's a lot of 120 cameras that you can get that are SLR. Uh, there's 120 point and shoot. Uh, it's a format that's been around for a long time. So that is our 120 camera and our 120 film. And you can see just a film on a roll with a paper backing, similar to the 620 and the 127. All right, so after 120, we move on to our next format. And that format is called 616. And this is something that Kodak also did. Um, 616 is a little bit of an older format. And in the case of this, this is actually a folding camera. So pretty nice, pretty old. Um, but 616 is also similar to 120 to 620 to 127 in the sense that you have a film with a paper backing on a roll and that's how your images are basically transported or held after you shoot a roll. So very similar to all the other cameras, your film is in the back and then you're shooting this way. So 620, pretty decently large um, and a lot of fun. Um, and then once again for 616, not any film out there really available that's fresh. Um, and your only option is to roll, like let's say a 120 on there. But you can see the size difference. So if you're rolling 120 onto a 616 film, you're actually not getting that full frame. So interesting enough. So that is 616 uh, format by Kodak. All right, so after our 616 format, we move on to the last format that I shoot in my darkroom and that is 4x5 sheet film. So to shoot that, this is my 4x5 speed graphic press camera. Um, and this works similar to the folding camera where you actually bring this out, then you extend out your bellows. <laughs> Oops, except I have that jammed. There we go. So we take that and we extend out our bellows, and then we have our manual control for focusing here on this knob. So. You can see the 4x5 quite a bit larger than all the other kind of cameras we're using here. Um, and because of that, the way that we shoot the film is a little different. So with the rest of these, we're all shooting multiple images on one roll of film. With the 4x5, you're actually shooting one roll of film or one sheet of film at a time. And you're actually using this ground glass in the back to focus and compose your image. So once you have your image focused and composed, on the 4x5, we have what are called film holders. So instead of a roll of film, you actually have a film holder like this right here. And there's a sheet of film on both sides of this. And what you do is you actually insert this into the back of your camera. And then once that's in there, you can pull out your film slide, exposing the film or opening up the film. And then obviously you fire your camera to expose that sheet of film. So similar to a roll where you're putting it in, getting 12, 18, 36 shots, you're basically getting one shot, putting your slide back in, and then in the case of these, you can actually flip this around and get two shots out of a film holder. So a much slower process, but um, when we lay this down here and you kind of look at all these film sizes next to each other, obviously the 4x5 is far bigger than anything else in the lineup. Um, even the closest, the 616 or your 120, 120 quite a bit smaller. Um, and especially if you talk about 35, you know, the size area of a 35 millimeter frame uh, looks pretty puny when you line it up with uh, the image area on one 4x5 shot. So you can see you're actually about one, two, ah, two and a half times the height of uh, what a normal 35 slide would be. So there we go. That is a full layout of all the different film sizes that I shoot. Uh, like I said, obviously there's a lot of sizes in between here. You know, or when I say that, there's a lot of sizes in between 110 up to the 4x5. But this is a pretty good range of the films that I shoot. Um, if I had to kind of give final thoughts on this, um, 120 is something that I shoot an awful lot of. 
Uh, 35 is obviously something I shoot a good quality of. And then I've been doing a lot of work with the 4x5 lately. Um, if I had to pick a favorite, I actually would go with 120. I love that we have film that we can have on a roll. Um, it's still really easy to get. And as far as cameras to shoot with, I'm a really big fan of the folder because you can get a decently large image uh, with something that can still fit in a coat pocket. Maybe not a pants pocket, but definitely a coat pocket if you're in winter time or if you just have a light jacket. You can easily slip this into a coat. Um, whereas 35, there's point and shoots, but a lot of the cameras I have are bulkier SLRs uh, and different things like that. So. Awesome, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I have a lot of other videos you can watch more about the process of shooting and developing film, but I thought it would be really fun to just give a quick rundown of all the different film sizes that there are out there. So hope you enjoyed watching, and uh, come back again soon.